Now it's time to add the game servlet component to our guessing game servlet edition application. Recall that in this application the game servlet is going to serve as both the controller and the view. Here we are back in Eclipse. You can see that I have the guessing game servlet version open. We can see that the three main components are visible in the package explorer. Under the controllers package we have the game servlet.java class which we'll open and start working with in a minute. Under game stuff package we have our game number.java class which will serve as all the numbers in the application and under web content we have our index.jsp file which will basically be our entry page into the game. Let's open up the game servlet and have a quick look at what was generated when we created this project and this component. I'm going to double click on the tab in order to make it full screen. First line we see that the generated servlet correctly located within its package. Next on line 3 we see that the IO exception has been imported. We could actually expand this and we see other things have been imported as well, notably the servlet request and response. Much of these were imported because we created this as a servlet, so they're imported for us and they'll be useful for things that we might need to do inside of our game servlet, specifically when we want to use the request and the response objects. We see that it generated public class game servlet. It extends an HTTP servlet. It inherits any methods that are provided by HTTP servlet. We also notice a constructor. All this constructor does is call the, the constructor of the superclass, HTTP servlet. We also see two other methods that were generated, a do get and a do post. These methods are the ones that are going to be called depending on what method is generated with the request. The do get method will run when the get request has been received. Alternatively, if you use post as your method in a form tag, the do post method would be called. Many times you'll want different behavior for the do get or the do post. In this example, we're going to be a little bit lazy and we're going to make sure that they both have the same behavior. But instead of typing all the code in twice or copying and pasting it from one method to the other, let's just simply redirect anything that's sent as a get to the do post method. I'm going to get rid of the comment first. This dot do post. And note we're going to have to pass along the request and the response. So with this simple line, any get request that comes in will then just simply say, go run the do post method. There will be times you want to have different code in the do get than you do in the do post. So we'll put all our code in the do post. What will we do here? We need to get the input data. That would be the guess plus the hidden values sent to us from the hidden text boxes such as the target, the minimum, maximum of the range, and the number of guesses. We also need to then process the guess and then we need to generate the view. Let's work on number one to get the input data. First let's look at our index.jsp so that we can recall the type of form that's going to be sent the data will be coming from here and will be the text boxes that are located in this form. So we're going to have a guess, a min, a max, a target, and the number of guesses. And we can see the names of those here. So those are the values that we want to receive. Recall that we also want to get them as game numbers. For our purposes, let's get each piece of data as an integer and then we'll create and load a game number object for each one. First let's get the guess. Int I'm going to call this one guess int because it's my integer version for that. Int guess int integer dot parse int. Recall that we're going to get this off of the request object as a request parameter, and all request parameters are strings. So even though an int was probably typed into the guess text box, it's coming here to our servlet as a string. So request dot get parameter and then the name of the text box is the same as the name of our. So now we have received the guess. Let's now create a game number for it. Game number guess equals new game number and I believe we have an instructor that will take that. Notice we have an error message. 
Let's move the cursor over one of the error indicators, and we see gain number cannot be resolved to a type, probably because we have not imported it yet. Notice one of the seven quick fixes available. We need to import game number from game stuff, so let's click on the first one and see what happens. Notice the error message has disappeared. I can look up here at the top, and I see definitely an import statement has been added. One quick look at index.jsp shows that we have four other input items available. Min, max, target, guesses. I often like to copy the values from my JSP so I can create the statements for them and then delete any extra things. So I'm going to put command C, command V. Now I need to handle the minimum. Well let's just get that in the same way we got our guess. I'm going to call this one min int minimum. You might be wondering, why don't we just read all these as ints and then use them as ints? And in reality, this guessing game could use all of these as ints. The only reason we're using a game number is because it's a good way for you to use a very simple Java class and practice using a Java class along with JSPs or servlets. No other reason than that for this particular application. Notice I'm doing a lot of copying and pasting because that's nice and convenient. You want to do your cutting and pasting very carefully so you do not make silly mistakes and leave something unedited. Finally, get the number of guesses. At this point, we have actually received all of our input data. Request.getParameter used the request object. Notice that the request object was actually declared as part of the method stub. That's one difference between a JSP and a servlet. In a JSP, the request is pretty much just available to you. In a servlet, we have to make sure that there are object declarations for any objects that we may use. Now on to the next part, process the guess. Process the guess, we need to compare our target with the actual guess. Then depending on the outcome, we can set a message that will be displayed in the view and or we can increment the number of guesses. You might recall that we've actually done this logic in one of our JSPs in our earlier example. I'm going to cheat a little bit here just to save us some time. And I'm going to visit our previous example, the game JSP and I can just go ahead and get the code that processes the data. I'm going to copy that and paste it in right here. Again, when you copy and paste, you want to always be sure to check through the code to see if it's going to do what you hope for it to do. Okay, we have string declared as message. If the target value is equal to the guess value, we're going to set the message to congratulations and the number of guesses. Otherwise, we need to increment the number of guesses, and then we're going to determine whether it's lower or higher for the guess. If the guess is greater than the target, we set too high, please guess lower this time. Otherwise, if the guess is too low, we're going to say message too low, please guess higher this time. Now we need to generate the view. So let's think a moment. How are we going to generate this view? Which object is responsible for the output back to the client? If you said response, then you're correct. So what we need to do is set our response object up to be the output of this servlet. I'm going to introduce a couple of lines that you'll need to recognize, but you won't need to memorize them too much because when we get to MVC design pattern, they won't be needed as much. 
but they're basically designed to set up the response object as the output. So type response dot. We need to do what's called set content type. And inside here we're going to set it to text slash HTML semicolon care set equal UTF-8. There are a number of content types we could use here, but this is pretty much the basic or standard content type for an HTML page. What we've done now is set up the response object so that it will have content type that is HTML. The next thing we need to do is create an object that will actually write to this response. A nice convenient one is called a print writer. So say print writer out equals. Now instead of calling a constructor for a print writer, the response object actually has a method that will create a nice print writer for us to use. Response dot get writer. There's actually an error. So let's look at the error. Print writer cannot be resolved to a type. Okay, what causes that? Well, maybe I haven't imported print writer. Maybe I misspelled it. it doesn't recognize that print writer is a class. Shows me create class, print writer, change to print writer. Here's an example where one of the quick fixes doesn't work. Because actually I've made a couple mistakes here. Or at least I made one mistake and I haven't quite finished doing something else. Turns out that I misspelled print writer. The W of the writer portion should be a capital W. I'll change that, but the error doesn't go away because, as you guessed it, we have not yet imported a print writer. We see that's now, with it spelled correctly, one of the options in the quick fix list. So let's select that. We still got some lines of code to do, but it's not going to be that hard from now on. We now have a place to send our output. You might recall writing basic Java applications where the system.out sent you to the console or to your command prompt. In this case, we're going to do pretty much the same thing, but the out is not system.out, it's the response. So if we want to write to the response, we can do something like out dot print line, and then provide a string. So that string could be something like HTML. Imagine that. We can write HTML to the response and all those tags to the response so that when the response gets back to the client it'll be viewed or rendered in a browser. So our basic strategy is to do the same form as before but within print line. We pretty much have the form over here in our index.jsp. Let's go ahead and get our h1 all the way to doc type. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to overwrite this for a minute and paste. I did this because it's actually easier to fix this than it is to type all of these things. Let's do out dot print line parentheses quote. Now one problem we're going to have if we copy and paste in this way, go to the other end and hit ending parentheses semicolon, I need a quote there. But you notice what I've pasted also includes some double quotes. Let's change those to single quotes so that in the middle of the string we aren't ending the string inadvertently. Only a couple lines will we have to do this. So The other thing we can do is from the quote all the way back to the out we can copy that, paste that in in front of each of these items, save us a little time, I like mine to line up. At the end we need a, for each line a quote, a parenthesis, semicolon. So let's make that and then copy it to the end of each line. Again, all this copying and pasting is just a lazy way of avoiding typing it all. Let's see, inside of the one print line I need to change the double quotes to single quotes. Let's change the H1 now. 
to guess results. You can start to see, if you ignore the out.print line and just focus on what's being printed, that we've got the first part of our form page. Let's go back over to index.jsp. Much of this, the rest of it, also needs to be printed, so let's just copy all the way down, starting with the p tag down to the HTML. We'll make a few changes after we paste that. For instance, I'm going to copy out.print line, parentheses, double quote, and go ahead and paste that in front of everything. This is really messy, isn't it, to try to do HTML inside of a servlet. Hopefully that's a lesson you're getting here to help motivate you to want to do MVC design pattern where you can do all of your HTML inside So I copied the double quote, parentheses, semicolon, p tag looks good. Now in place of this line, we are going to want them to guess whatever the message is. So let's type that, message. Although that won't be in quotes. This is the second page, so we don't need a welcome message but we do need to be able to print out the actual message. Do they guess high or lower? Did they get that correct? Now we need some logic though. If they got it correct, we need to show maybe play again. It will tell them they got it correct. But if they got it incorrect, we'll need to show the form. So let's put an if statement here. If target dot dot get value equals guess dot get value. That's a correct guess. So what we need is an out.println statement that says something like index.jsp play again. So I mean a simple hyperlink that if they got it correct, we're going to hit play again. The message will already take care of telling them whether they won or lost. Else, if they did not get it correct, we want to output the form again. Go down here at the end and finish my if statement. Clean this up as much as possible. Each line I'll need to end with the quote, parentheses, semicolon again. Form name, it's called guess form. Change the single quote, double quotes to single quotes. Action, run game.jsp. Hey, that's not going to be correct. Let's leave it for now, but we'll correct that here and on the index page in just a moment. Notice the next line. Another interesting one. In this case, we want to say guess number, but notice when the JSP we were getting the guesses value. So how can we show that here? We can concatenate plus. Remember now we're in Java. We are not in a JSP. The appropriate line for that one. Number guesses. Input text box. Can you see where I'm going with this? I'm going to uh, I'm going to clean this up. I won't make you watch the rest of this, but we'll look over it after it's finally cleaned up. Now I'm back and I've cleaned up as best I could the output portion of this servlet. Gone through and created a bunch of out.print line statements that include both HTML tags and where necessary concatenation with 
values from our Java objects. You can see that each line begins with an out.println. Inside of the method, the parameter is a string. Where necessary, I've changed double quotes into single quotes as part of the HTML tag. And at other times, I've used concatenation to create a string that includes both literal, including HTML tags, and values from our Java objects. And I think that at this point, we have a working solution except for one thing. So let's check the servlet one more time. When a post is received, we will get our input data. We'll process the guess and create a message. We'll also increment the guess if the guess is incorrect. We'll then create an HTML page. The HTML page will include whatever the message is. If it was a correct guess, that will be all it will have, and then it will have a hyperlink back to index to play again. But if it was incorrect, it'll have a form that asks them to correct again and include the current data that we're trying to keep up with. I alluded to one thing that's not working right yet. Let's look back at index.jsp and check out the form. In the form, we gave it a name, an action, and a method. Post would be fine. Get would also be good. Let's change it to get just so we can look at our URL to see values when we go to testing. What about that action? Remember, we copied this file from our previous example that had game.jsp, but now we're using game servlet. Remember back when we created our servlet, we had a URL mapping, and at that time, we changed the URL mapping to do guess. So that's what we want here for the action, do guess. The action of this form should match whatever the URL mapping is for our servlet. So now when we click on the submit button, do guess will lead us to running the servlet. Let's go back to game servlet, one other place we need to change this. And all of this output, whenever we make a form, we also have the form tag, and we want the action to come right back here to this particular servlet and run it again. So at this point, we got the input data using the request object, we process it, and we created the view. In our next video, we'll test our application and see if everything is working right and how we should fix it. In this video, we saw the basic structure of a servlet. We saw how to access the request and response objects in a servlet, request for input and response for output. And we saw how we could create a servlet that will act as both the controller and the view. This has been a Piercy production.